praise and thank God for this day, for truly this is the day that the Lord has made. We praise God and thank Him and welcome you to our worship service today. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Living With This Ministries. We thank and praise God for you taking time to stop by and be with us here in the sanctuary as we lift up the name of Jesus because truly He is great, greatly to be praised and worthy of all the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to open with prayer, then we're going to open with scripture, then we're going to go ahead and worship the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you this afternoon for this day. For indeed, this is a day that you've made, O oh God. We worship you and magnify you, O oh God, because you're great, O oh God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. We thank you for starting us on our way, O oh God. We thank you for being with us and giving us, Lord God, the health and strength and wherewithal that we need to be in your house. One more time, O oh God. God, before we ask you for anything, we want to take time to thank you, O oh God. We praise you, Lord God, for your mighty acts, O oh God. We praise you according to your excellent greatness, O oh God. We praise you because you didn't have to do it, but you did, Lord God. And because you did, we worship you today, God. We lift up holy hands in the sanctuary, O oh God. We make a joyful noise unto you, O oh Lord. We bless your name and we magnify you right now, God. All we ask you to do this afternoon is have your way in our worship service, O oh God. Move by your spirit that souls might be saved, O oh God. Move by your spirit that yokes might be broken, O oh God. Move by your spirit that burdens might be destroyed, Lord God. That life might be changed, O oh God. That victory might be won in the name of Jesus. We thank you and praise you for having your way today, O oh God. We thank you and praise you for meeting us right here, Lord God. We thank you and praise you, Lord God, for stirring our hearts and stirring our spirits, Lord God, to be all that you call us to be, O oh God. That we be the living witnesses that you're calling us to be, O oh God, in the community, O oh God. That we be the living witnesses along the highway and in the hedges, Lord God. We ask you to have your way to move, Lord. And we give your name to be honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture for today is found in the 150th Psalm in its entirety. And it says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet and sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. That means each and every one of you, where you are right now, in the midst of what you're going through, God has kept you through seven days. Amen. He's kept you from danger seen and unseen. Even though there was a heartbreak yesterday, there was a daybreak today. And the fact that he blessed you to see that daybreak today is reason enough to give our God praise. Because indeed he has everything that we need. Amen. Amen. this morning for all that he is in my life and all that he's done and he continues to do. He really Hallelujah, is my everything. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's Hallelujah, a God Jesus. that is everything and has everything that I need. Scripture talks about in Philippians 4, 19, it says, and my God, yes, God. will liberally, yes. that means generous, generously, yes. supply Fill until full, not halfway full, mm. not giving us pieces, but yes. to work full and overflowing. Yes, 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 yes. Every need, mm. according to his riches and his glory, which is unlimited. Hallelujah, so Jesus. everything that you need, whatever everything. you may need, yes. all you have to do is ask. Hallelujah. He may not give us what we want, what we want, but he definitely will supply every need that we have. There's no need for any boys or any lacks in our lives because God of everything will supply all that you need. Yes, Peace, will. joy, love, patience, yes, kind, anything that you need, God is able to do that. Hallelujah. And as we worship this morning in song, we're going to declare that. Amen. Amen. I was thinking in the you. I have everything I need. 
I have 
protection, my strength. My protection, my strength. My joy and my peace. My joy and my peace. My portion, my grace. My portion, my grace. To help me run this race.
through 21. I'll be reading from the New King James Version of God's Holy Word. Again, that's Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 15 through 21. What you find written there reads as follows. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. As we speak this afternoon to the subject, bringing clarity to the land of confusion, amen. amen. Bringing clarity to the land of confusion. We're starting a new message series entitled, The Time Is Now. And the Lord has impressed upon me more powerfully than ever before that indeed the time is now. Amen. The time is now for us to be about our Father's business. The time is now for us to do the work of ministry. The time is now for us to stop talking about it and start being about it. Amen. Amen. And the reason why there's so much misunderstanding and, and, and poor understanding of the gospel and of what a uh, believer is is because of the plight of our world today. Our world is not the same world that it was back in the 1950s. Our world is not the same world that it was when I was born and I grew up through uh, the 70s and through the 80s. The world is not the same. Things that are now just commonplace were taboo back then. You didn't talk about them. You didn't experience them. You didn't look at them. And the Lord brought this to my attention and brought me to this message in of all places, my car driving. I was on my way actually back from Iowa for the day trip to go and, and, and be with uh, Brother Chris and Sister Mel. And we know how static is and how radio stations are. They overlap. I put on like a frequency, and as I moved through states and states and, and, and sections of states, the genres changed. And I was, as I was driving back, I'd just come across the, the Mississippi, and I was listening to the frequency that's the gospel frequency at home, and it was playing 80s music. I'm a child of the 80s, and I love music. And it just so happened that uh, a song that I liked back in the 80s came on the radio, and that was a, a Genesis song entitled The Land of Confusion. And as I listened to it, I, I listened to it initially for what it was for the music because it's just, it was just a matter of for the music's sake, I'm driving along, so I got some nice music to listen to. But the Holy Spirit said, stop. Listen to the words that were written in the song. And as he took me to the words that were written in the song, it, it, it blew my mind when I, I, I looked at it again from the standpoint of this song was written back in 1986. So it's not a brand new song. And the bridge in the song basically summarizes where we are right now. And the bridge of the song says that there's too many men, too many people making too many problems. And there's not much love to go around. Can't you see that this is a land of confusion? And when I listen to that, I'm like, you know what? 
That's true. There are too many men and women that profess the name of Jesus Christ that are preaching hate, that are preaching chaos, that are preaching division, that are preaching confusion, that are preaching turmoil. So the individuals that are receiving that message are receiving mixed messages. And how can you move forward clearly if you're receiving a mixed message? The word puts it that this, that this way, that a double-minded man is what unstable in all of his ways. So we're looking for stability in a time and a space where confusion and chaos is going forth and God is asking where can I find someone that's willing to stand up yes. and bring clarity in the midst of this land of confusion I can bring it to the day right here right now there are too many young people running around carrying names and carrying guns there are too many people that are more concerned with popping off than, 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 than popping into the house of worship to give their lives to Christ there are too many people that are relying more on pharmaceutical remedies and than relying on the great physician there's too much going on in the world today there's too much chaos and, and too much confusion and God is calling us as his children to stand up and realize that the time is now, church. If not now, when? We're quick to fall back on the scripture. Well, the word says that in the last days it's going to be this, it's going to be that, it's going to be the other. My father always taught me that if you're on time, you're early. And if you're on time, my man's eyes, you're late. And the problem is the church is trying to time out when the church wants to show up and when the church wants to be what God has called the church to be, which is confusion in and of itself because the word says that no man knows the day, yes. nor the hour, the when the Son of Man shall appear. So God said, take this time and, and, and teach my children that, that I need them to not only be about my business, but I need them to aggressively do the work of ministry. And I need them to do it right now because I need clarity brought to the land of confusion. Because in the midst of the land of confusion, I have sons and daughters that are seeking my face. I have sons and daughters that are looking for a better way. But if they go by what they see, they're not going to change how they act. And I need something to show them that there is a Indeed, a different Amen. way. Amen. Which brings God's attention to us, church. We have to realize that our world is indeed in a dark state. Amen. But we serve a God that equips us to function in every state. Amen. Amen. I have a friend that's a realtor, and, and from time to time we talk, and the last time I talked to her, she said what she was looking to do is she was trying, she was looking to, to get licensed in all 50 states, or 52 states. I said, well, why would you go to the trouble of getting licensed in all 52 states? That costs a lot of money, doesn't it? Isn't that kind of a lot? She was like, it's an investment. And I need you, church, I need you to catch this. It's an investment. But the return on the investment in the long term makes a short-term inconvenience worth the investment. And so often what we fail to realize is that God is looking for us to make a short-term investment in doing the work that he's given us to do. And he's called us to go into this dark world to help people see something. But common sense says if you're in a dark place, what do you need to take with you to help you see? Light, right? Our text tells us. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, Paul is saying, and your love for all the saints, so the catalyst is there, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So we're plugged into the power source through prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. He is the manifestation of it. The eyes of your understanding being what? Enlightened. Which means we're not walking around in darkness with our eyes closed. We're not supposed to look like everybody else in the midst of darkness because we're not called to be like everybody else in the midst of darkness because we are part of a peculiar people. We are part of a royal priesthood. We're part of a holy nation. We're not designed to function like everybody else because we're not made like everybody else. Amen. And what's happening in the, t in the text here is that Paul is reminding 
the church at Ephesus of the state of the world. But in response, he's also reminding the church, the state that it's supposed to be in to make a difference in the world. Because just like the world has a state that it's in, the church has a state that it should be in. And the state that the church is in is the exact opposite of the state that the world is in because the church is designed to be a, a, a respite. The church is designed to be a spiritual hospital. The church is designed to be the spiritual alternative to where the world is right now. And God has called us to make a difference in the world. How? By being the sources of light. By being the points of light that he created us to be. But so many of us want to walk around looking like everybody else because we're afraid to upset the apple cart. We're afraid that our income might get affected. We're afraid that those people that we feel have clout and have pull in our lives might stop pulling for us and start pulling against us. My Bible tells me that God for us is more than the whole world against us. Because it's quality, not quantity that matters. Amen. See, God wants us to have a quality relationship with him, a quality connection to him. Because when you have a quality connection to something, no matter what comes, if weather comes, if circumstances come, if trauma comes, if, if shaking comes, it's not going to, the connection is not going to be broken. So you don't have to worry about a breakdown in the appearance. You don't have to worry about a drop in the quality of sound. God is saying that my word sounds the same. As long as you say Jesus Christ and him crucified, I don't care if it's midnight or it's midnight. Day. I don't care if there's a mountaintop or the valley low. I don't care if the people want to hear or they're trying to stone you. If you give that same message, that same message is going to bring clarity in the midst of confusion. Because Jesus Christ said he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But what we like to do as a church, we kind of like to be like that commercialist on TV right now about the shingles virus, you all, I think you all know the one where everybody's going about their normal day-to-day -day activities. And it would look like a normal commercial, but it fooled me the first time I watched it. Until I took a good look at it and I noticed that everybody's eyes was closed. Everybody's eyes in the commercial were closed. You have people conducting business in the commercial. You have people doing social gatherings in the commercial. You have people talking to one another with their eyes closed. You even have people in the movie theater with their eyes closed. And you think when you caught it, when I caught it, I'm like, that's crazy. People in the movie theater with their eyes closed. God's like, no, it's not crazy. Because there are, my, there, there are children out there. I have children out there that are seeing but have no vision. They're hearing, but they have no concept of what they're listening to. Because they're going through the motions. They're more concerned with being in one another's presence than being in my presence. Because when you're in my presence, I illuminate you. When you're in my presence, I draw attention to you because as I draw attention to you and as I fill you up with more of myself, you begin to glow and you begin to radiate because the word lets us know that, that, that we're somebody. The word lets us know that we're the light of the world. The word lets us know we're like a brand new light bulb. You ever put a brand new light bulb in a pitch black room and the light switch was on? What happened when that connection is made? Whether you're ready or not, that light comes on. Amen. And when the light comes on, everything that was in that room that was dark became illuminated. God is calling us to make every Sunday an epiphany Sunday. Every Sunday a Sunday of enlightenment. Every Monday the same. Every Tuesday the same. Every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday the same. Why? Because God called us to be not only a light for ourselves, but he called us to be what the word says in Matthew 5 verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill can't be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. But instead, they put it on a lampstand, and it does what? It gives light to all who are in the house. 
In other words, like in the commercial, the kicker in the commercial was, and the tagline was, you know what, the, 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 the shingles virus, I'm paraphrasing, the shingles virus is in your system, but you may not know it. It's time for you to wake up. And when the man said, wake up, the person that they drew a close up on opened their eyes. And they realized they were the only person in the theater whose eyes were open. They were the only person in the theater, going back to our text, whose eyes of understanding were enlightened in that moment. But what she did is instead of just sitting there wondering, how did I get my eyes open? She started talking to the person next to her. And of course the commercial didn't stick around to, to see what the end result of that conversation was. But if I were to take creative license for the, for the sake of what we're talking about, I would venture to guess that what she was doing was witnessing to that sister saying, hey man, look, there's a better way. I need you to open your eyes because there's so much that you're missing. I know that we're in the movie theater right now, but you can't see the colors on the screen. You can't see how vivid it is. You can't hear how, how crystal clear the sound is. I need you to open up your senses and allow what's on the outside to get on the inside. God is saying the same thing. He needs us to open up ourselves to the light that he wants to put in us so that he can use us Amen. to make a Amen. difference Amen. in the lives of others Amen. that are out there. First Lady had a brilliant idea, and I, and I, I agree with it. We, we need to get the, the, the message out there. We need to get the word out there to the people. We need to get the worship out there to the people. We, we praise God for everyone that's here, but we need the word out there where it's going to make a difference because out there is where the confusion is. Out there is where the chaos is. Out there is where the darkness is. Man. And we're the light of the world that God wants to use us to let the world know that is in need of a savior. You in the dark. I got the light. You probably want the light because I'm not going to be here always. But I can show you how to get what I got. But so many of us don't want to have that simple conversation. Because when we have that simple conversation, that leads to much more challenging conversations. What do you mean you got something that I don't have? What do you mean? Are you trying to say that you're better than me? Are you, tr you trying to say that I'm messed up? Are you trying to say that I'm broken and I need to be fit? It starts a whole different conversation. And what God desires us to do is, is, is say, hey man, look, I'm not trying to cause no confusion. I'm not trying to cause no chaos. All I'm trying to do is bring you to a point of clarity. See, in my line of work, working with individuals that are, are challenged mentally, being a case manager, that's really the unwritten, that's really the unwritten goal in everything that we do, bringing every client that we have to a point of mental clarity. Because when you bring someone to a point of mental clarity, that helps them not only identify where they are, and not only identify what's around them, but guess what the first thing is that they identify? They identify themselves and their condition and what's going on with them. And it's a tough road to go down and it's, it's a challenging road to slog through some days. And, but the payoff, going back to what I said earlier, my friend says, the payoff makes it worth the investment. Because when you see that brother, when you see that sister finally have the eye of their understanding truly enlightened and finally understand that there's something better for them. Now what they have now, the first thing they do is what the word says is crazy. The first thing that they do is, the first, is, is in, in by instinct for survival is the last thing that we as believers do. And that's examine ourselves. Religion has a program to point the finger at everybody else. My grandmother always told me, every time you point your finger at somebody, try it. If, 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 if at home, try it. Try it in the sanctuary. When you point, you got one, two, three, four fingers pointing back at you. But so often we want to point the finger of condemnation at everybody, forgetting that the word says that there is therefore now what? No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh or who are not doing this thing to go through the motions and not doing this thing to please their flesh and not doing this thing to be seen to say, hey, look at me. We're doing this thing because we have a divine mandate that God has given us. And whether you're with me or not with me, whether you're for us or against us, whether there's a lot or whether there's a little, I've got to do what God has called 
me to do. And that's what God is calling us as a church to be. Because there are too many men and women out there. There are too many people out there. They have too many problems that they're talking back and forth about. That they're allowing those spirits to jump on and off themselves. And, and God wants us to come in and bring clarity because chaos and confusion is reigning in the world. But God came to say that, that I've overcome the world. And just like I've overcome the world, you can overcome the world. But more importantly, as you overcome the world, bring somebody with you. Yeah. This is the journey I want you to take by yourself. I don't want you to take this journey alone. This is not a journey that's designed for a party of one. Think about it. If I sent you all out to witness, and I didn't send you out alone, but I sent you out in pairs, would it not stand to reason that I want you to bring somebody with you once you come to understand who I am? But so many of us want to just take the ride by ourselves. I remember I read an EPA study a few years back that 60 to 75 percent of the vehicles that are on the road during commuter time got only one person in them. And so many of them are going to the exact same building. There are people that work in the same department that live up the street from one another that both drive themselves to work by themselves. They'll say if people would just start carpooling and just start pairing up and buddying up, if people would just start sharing the ride, we can change our climate. That's a spiritual principle. If we would start sharing our road to glory and sharing the good news and helping people see that there's a better way, introduce them to who it is that we got to know, we can change the climate of our communities. We can change the mindsets of our children. We can change the order of the value system to put God back where he belongs, which is at the top. In our text, Paul is trying to help us see here that he's introducing the church of Ephesus to the true savior of the world. And he's given the members of the church the opportunity to receive true salvation and freedom. Notice I said true salvation and freedom. Because it says in the portion of the text I'm grabbing that from is, is here, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. That's a heck of a shopping list. But I want to unpack it a little bit. Because as we begin to unpack it a little bit and begin to look at it, we'll understand how it equates to Paul helping the church of Ephesus see that there's a true Savior that has a true degree of salvation and a true measure of freedom. Because there's a whole lot of people out there that are bought into the confusion of the day. And they have something like the word says, having a form of godliness, but they're denying the power. Thereof. In other words, they're talking a great game. But when it comes down to having the ability to do what it is that's being said, they're coming up short. And they're coming up short because they never plugged into the power source. Because if you look a little bit closer and your eyes have been enlightened and your eyes have been opened to the truth, the word says, and you shall know the truth. And that knowledge of the truth is what will set you free. Yeah. True freedom comes when we have a working and intimate knowledge of who Jesus Christ is, not for my mother, not for my brother, but for me. When I was growing up, there was a song, it's me, it's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me. That's not to say that I don't love my sister or brother enough to pray for him. But I'm not going to be any good to my sister or my brother if I'm praying for them to get it right and I'm not right. Because if I'm not right, how do I know that my prayer is not doing more harm to them than good for them? Got to work on getting myself right. And I'm not, please understand, I'm not saying to be selfish here. What I'm saying is, is that because the world is in need of a savior, it's kind of like on the airplane, when, if they say, when, before you take off, if something bad happens, before you can put somebody else's oxygen mask on, you got to put yours on first. Because you can't help nobody if you're out of breath. Jesus Christ is the spiritual air that we believe. 
Yet there are far too many that are suffocating spiritually because of the contaminants that are in the spiritual atmosphere right now, because of the lust that's out there, because of the greed that's out there, because of the murder out there, the homicide and, and suicide, because of the perversion that's out there, because of the lasciviousness that's hanging over the city like the smoke is hanging over the city today. It makes it hazy out there. It makes it hard to see out there. It makes it hard to navigate out there. It makes it difficult to do what we need to do out there, provided we're not doing it with God as our forefront, because God for us is more than the whole world against us. And if we're doing this thing God's way, and if we have a working knowledge of who God is, and if we understand where our true salvation and our true freedom comes from, we can go back to the toolbox that was given to us right here and pull out exactly what we need. My dad taught me that no matter what's going on, as long as you got, as long as you got a hammer, screwdriver, pair of pliers, and some duct tape, you can fix pretty much 90% of everything that's out there that's broken. And the 10% that you can't fix, you got a cell phone with you already, just call somebody for the other 10%. Man. So you have everything that you need. But what's happened is, is that religion has taken this thing and made this thing and they and, and, and taken the Old Testament concept and put 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, 1,500, 1,600. You got to follow this clause and this rule and this chapter and this time. And if you don't do it exactly like this, then no, you're not saved. You're disqualified. We've made this thing more challenging and more difficult than it has to be. And that's why God is saying the time is now. Now is the time for the true church to stand up. Now is the time for those that truly know me to make this thing simple. Now is the time for those that are truly walking in freedom to come forth and show people that there is a better way. That Jesus Christ, like Jesus took the 1100 plus uh, laws and broke them down to two, he wants us to show the world that as long as you understand and are willing to live out John 3, 16 and 17, your life can be changed. As long as you're willing to realize that God loved the world so much that he gave. If you recognize nothing else, just recognize that. If you recognize that, that should prompt you, Holy Spirit should prompt you in your understanding of that to do likewise. Because if you, God, are the one that I'm trying to be like, and you're in a giving posture, how can I be in a taking posture like everybody else in the world and say that I represent you? That's not of you. But the sad part about it is there are a whole lot of individuals that profess the name of Jesus Christ that are doing just that. And God is saying, time is out for that. I need my children to understand that there's too many men and women out there that are causing too many problems out there with too much false doctrine out there, with too much corrupt thinking out there, with too much sub sub or suspect speech out there. It's getting my people confused. It's keeping them double-minded. Keep them in a spiritual haze. They can't, they can't find their way out. But I've given you clarity. You have the light that they need. Because I've placed it in you. Because you're the light of the world. And the light that's in you, that, that, that's the light of the world, is designed to go meet them where they are. Just as Christ met you where you were. He came through the pitfalls. He came through the stuff. He came through the mess. He came through the smell. He went through everything that you have gone through and drug yourself through. And he grabbed you by the hand. And as long as you consented, he led you out of darkness into the marvelous light. God desires us to go back and do the same thing. He doesn't want us to leave a single brother or sister behind. And, and, and before you say, well, well, you don't know what it took for me to get out of there, Pastor. I got out of there once with my mind. I'm not going back in there. I'm here to let you know that as long as you're willing to go in and allow God to go in, if you hold your peace, the Lord will fight your battle. Amen. So there's no excuse. Because God is calling us to be a source of clarity. He wants to use us as sources of clarity to speak clarity into the lives of our brothers and sisters that are wallowing in self-pity, that are wallowing in self-doubt, that are wallowing in despair, that are wallowing in double-mindedness, that are hung between two opinions, that think that the way that the wide, smooth road that leads straight to hell is the only way that there is. But he's saying straight as a gate and narrow as a way. There are very few men or women that find it, but I'm here to let you know that good news is at your house today because I'm here with the roadmap. Let me introduce you to the one 
that can change your life. Let me introduce you to the one that can set you free, that can truly make you free. Because all it takes to make you free is not sacrificing this and doing that and doing the other. It's the same thing that Jesus said to the man who was in the pool that had been there for umpteen years. Do you want to be made whole? Do you have the faith to believe that what I've done for you is enough? Do we as a church have faith enough to believe that what Jesus did six hours on Friday is enough to go get that drug deal over the corner, to go get that prostitute that snaps at everybody, to go get that young person that beats up everybody that comes in front of them, to go get that wayward child that's, that, that's hopping to go around, that's contrary to what you're praying for. But it, it, is it enough? I'm here to let you know it's more than enough. Because 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 7 says this. This I'm reading from the Amplified because I really wanted us to get this. For there's only one God and only one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all people. A fact that was attested to at the right and proper time. And of this matter, I was appointed a preacher and an apostle, a special messenger that was sent. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I do not falsify when I say this. A teacher of the Gentiles in the realm of faith and truth. In other words, what Paul is saying here is that I don't speak the language that you do. I've never been on drugs. I've never been out there. I've never been in a game. I've never done this. I've never done that. I've never done the other. But what I have done, which is a universal language, is I've sinned just as you have. I, I speak redemption. I speak redemption because I was a sinner that was lost too, but, but I found my way out because I found the ambassador. I found the mediator. The mediator speaks both the language of the land that he's in and the language of the land that he's from. I found the mediator and he met me where I was. And when he met me where I was, he helped me understand that there was a better way. And once he helped me understand that there's a better way, and he gave me the language by the Holy Spirit to share with other people, he sent me to come get you. That's the mindset we've got to have. And when we get that clear, we have a self, a self actual, actualizing moment. God should know what? Forgive me for being lazy. Forgive me for not doing my part. Now I understand God. What the church mothers were saying when they were saying that he has no hands but our hands. Has no feet but our feet. Has no voice but our voice. But because God, you're waiting on me to go out and do what you've called and put me to do. God's like, yes, my son, yes, my daughter, now, now you understand. I've made you a special messenger. I've given you insight into the realm of faith and truth because faith and truth are what it's going to take to, have to, to, to help you grasp how to use what's in the shopping cart, how to use the hope of your calling. How to use the riches of the glory of his inheritance in you. How to use the exceeding greatness of his power towards you because you believe. How to use it because once you learn how to wield that and once you learn how to understand and use that, you become public enemy number one to the devil. You become public enemy number one to the, to the kingdom of darkness because what you're doing now is you're ushering people in from dark, out of darkness and into the marvelous light and the enemy understands and knows that this is a critical time because indeed the world is in the last days. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, we're coming down the home stretch. Whether you understand what's going on or not, the, 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 this thing is wrapping up. Whether you want to, to say so or not, time is winding up. And because time is winding up, God is calling us to get out there and do the work that he created us to do. He's given us an assignment. He's given us work to do. Tomorrow is not the time. Next week is not the time. Next month is not the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. I said, well, Pastor, I don't know if I'm, I'm ready. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not finished school yet. I, I, I don't know. I don't have this. I don't have that. What you do have 
is an understanding of the concept of time. And you have an understanding of what it is that God has given to us. Because what it is that God has ultimately given to us is he's given us dominion. He's given us dominion over the forces of darkness. And this dominion is transferable. And this dominion is shareable. Not only, it says at the end of it, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Which means, going back to what my friend the realtor said, if we're willing to do the work to make the investment today into the lives of every person that we can, to bring them to a point of their eyes opening up in their commercial, and them witnessing to somebody else, and them sharing with other people how to go forth and having a self-actualizing moment of their own to help other people have the same in their lives and more souls come to the kingdom. What you're doing is set yourself up so that when you close your eyes on this side, you wake up on the other side listening to our Savior say, well done, my good and faithful servant. God wants us to understand that in the midst of the confusion, there's a definite way out. There's an avenue of escape. And that avenue of escape goes by the name of Jesus. See, it's not hard, church. But the world wants to make it more difficult than it has to be. That's why here in our text, what Paul is doing is identifying through the church of Ephesus the scope of their ministry as being an assignment that will be passed from generation to generation. That's how we got it, because this same assignment has been passed down to us. And what our focus has to be, it's got to be on helping others see that now is the time for action. Amen. Amen. Stuff that you can let ride for a week, a month, you can't even let ride a day now. There was a time that it was not even heard of, very rarely heard of, for a child to, to transition before their parents, unless it was like some grave illness or a tragedy. It's happening every day now. There was a time where it was taboo and unheard of for, for children to be uh, openly disrespectful to their parents in public, and now you got kids jumping on, their, jumping on their parents on TV, doing it for the gram. Our world is in chaos. Our world is in confusion. Our world has turned into the land of confusion. But in the midst of that chaos of, of too many men and too many people making too many problems, I have good news. There is an avenue of escape. There is a way out. And his name is Jesus Christ. And six hours one Friday, he hung with his arms stretched out to represent the bridge from where we've been and where we're going. Represent the bridge from darkness to the marvelous light. And God desires us to cross that bridge. And once we cross that bridge, he don't want us to just celebrate on the other side. He wants us to go back and get others to bring them across the bridge. Because he desires that none should perish. But that all should have everlasting life. Hebrews says this in the third chapter, verses 14 and 15. And I'm done. For we have become partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, while it said, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Today, this day, if you hear his voice, don't be like everybody out there. Don't be like those that are walking around in the haze. Don't be like those that are out there in the funk. Don't be like the world. You've got to be different. You've got to be peculiar. You've got to do things differently. Open your eyes and wake up. Because now is the time for salvation. Open your eyes and wake up because now is the time to bring about change. God desires this church to bring clarity to the land of confusion. He's called us by name. And he's given us his name. That's the name that we've been given. And our job in this world that we live in is to go out and show people that there's a different way. That they don't have to live in confusion. But instead they can live in the peace and knowing that victory is theirs. Through Christ Jesus and God desires to call them to bring that clarity to others. That they might let other people know 
the same. Amen. 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 We thank and praise God for his word on today. And we thank and praise God for the clarity. And my hope and my prayer is that he brings to us as we seek to live lives that are pleasing to him. See, making, up to the, making your mind up to do that might leave you in a place where it seems like you're in the minority, but I'm here to let you know that you plus God is always the majority. Amen. Amen. Don't matter where you are. Don't matter what it looks like. It don't matter what people say to you. As long as you and God are in agreement, you're always in the majority. People seek to cater to the masses, and, and, and God made it crystal clear to me as I was driving back. Long after the song was over, long as the record was over, I didn't even hear much else for about a good half an hour because the Lord was just ministering to me about that. And my children, my children so desperate for approval from man, so desperate for approval from the world, so desperate for approval from the masses and the magnitude that they're failing to realize that the only approval that matters is the approval from the audience of one. The audience is of one that can put you into heaven or banish you to hell. They're more concerned with being pleasing to one another, son, than they are in being pleasing to me. And that shook me as I was driving home. And that made me want to really realize, God, help me see. I, I may not fully understand how you're going to get me to where you're trying to get me to. I don't understand how you're going to get us to where you're trying to get us, but I know that you got us going somewhere. You've shown me what the vision is, so God, I don't understand how to get there, but you do. So help me understand you better. And as you help me understand you better, you then order my steps in your word. So that I can take those steps and be pleasing to you. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, the first step that you can take on that journey and that prayer is saying yes to Jesus Christ. Those that are in the sanctuary, every head bowed, every eye closed. Everybody in the sanctuary today I know has a relationship with Jesus Christ. And what we're doing here at LWA, and I would encourage you to do the same thing. Is that if everyone in you, you and your household and your immediate circle is saved, praise God for that. But then get someone else in mind. Set your mind on that person. And make that person, ask God to give you whom that person or persons are. And make it your business to pray for them, intercede for them. That they will come to the same enlightenment that you've come to. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word that you've given us on today. We praise you and we worship you, God, for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you for making us doers of this word, God, and not hearers only. We thank you for using us mightily in the earth today, oh God, to make a difference and to make that supernatural impact that you call us to make, oh God. Father, use us for your glory and, and stir up the gifts that you place in us, God. But more importantly, stir up a hunger and a desire in us, God, to want more of you. To want to be all that you created us to be. Help us to be sources of light, Lord God, in the darkness, Father God. Do it right now, beginning today, that as we lift up our brothers, as we lift up our sisters right now, God, in prayer. That you move by your spirit. Holy Spirit, we dispatch you to go right now and minister to that heart. We dispatch warring and ministry and guardian angels right now to minister to them, to disrupt any and every attack that the enemy will seek to be sending right now to stop the salvation move from taking place. Save them right now, God. Pull them out of the land of confusion, God. Put their feet on straight street, oh God. Use them to run for you like never before, oh God. Yes. Use them to run for you to make a difference, God, in the lives of others. Use them to run for you, Lord God, that they would run for you and get others, Lord God, to say yes to you. Father, just as it, just as it takes a village to raise children, it takes members of your village, God, to save your children. Use us, Father God, for your glory. We thank you for salvation coming to the households that are represented in prayer today. We thank you for continued salvation coming on, staying with the households that are represented here today, oh God. We thank you for sending healing, Lord God. 
to the households of those that need healing, oh God. We thank you for sending deliverance, Lord God, to the households of those, Lord God, that need deliverance, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for giving us renewed commitment and renewed resolve, Lord God, to continue to cry loud and spare not and be all that you called us to be. We thank you, Father, for having your way. We thank you for souls being saved. We thank you for lives being changed. We thank you for increase, God. And we thank you for every testimony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We truly thank and praise God for his word on today. And we thank and praise God for all that he's doing today. And as we prepare to give, it's an opportunity to truly be a blessing. For giving is a part of worship, amen. Giving is just as critical as the other dynamics of worship because God indeed loves a cheerful giver. And the giving of our, our treasure should be second nature because the first giving that God is asking for is of ourselves to him. This work, this, this, this ministry, not only LWM, but this work and ministry of Jesus Christ is indeed good ground. So we ask that as you sow, you sow as, as liberally as you can. You sow from the measure of faith that God has given unto you. There are many ways that you can sow into our ministry. You can sow into our ministry via Cash App by dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. That's again, dollar sign, the letter L. Letter W, the word ministry is 2020. You can sow into our ministry through Tithely or through Giveify. Both of those look for Living Witness Ministries, LaGrange, Illinois, and that's our location. Or if you want to do it the old fashioned way, you can always just drop a check or check a money order in the mail to P.O. Box 250 769, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53225. Again, that's P.O. Box 250 769. Walking this constant 53225. Whatever mode of giving you choose, we ask that you stand in agreement with us as you give. I, I choose to give electronically. Whatever mode of giving you have, you just hold up with your right hand right now, symbolic of the authority in which you walk, and as a point of unity as we pray for blessing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you for every gift that we're about to receive. But even more so, we thank you and praise you for every giver, Lord God, because we know that the gift. Without the giver, indeed, is barren, Father God. Father God, we pray that you bless both the gifts and the givers, Lord God, with tremendous blessing, Lord God, and with tremendous increase, that you use both, Lord God, to do the work of ministry for the kingdom in such a fashion so that souls will be saved and lives will be changed, oh God. We thank you for increase. We thank you for favor. We thank you for blessings, and we thank you, most importantly, for a 100-fold return on every gift that's given, Lord God, because we know that we can't beat you giving. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As you as you give, we want to go through our announcements. We want to, to uh, continue praying for our uh, sick and shut in. We invite you to all of our activities that we have throughout the week. We do have um, our, our uh, prayer on Mondays uh, at 5 a.m. Central. We do have Bible study on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Prayer Monday night, prayer Monday mornings, rather, is on our prayer line. Uh, all the information on getting in touch with these places are located on our website. If you don't see it on the website, feel free to send a chat and someone definitely will respond. In our Bible study, we're in the midst of a fantastic series that's based on one of our members, Sister Tavina uh, Dorcha's book, uh, Girl Mind Your Kingdom Business. She's doing a series of lessons on her book, and you've been missing out. You've been missing out. You've been missing out. I encourage you to come join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you desire to come and worship with us in person, our next in-person worship date will be on... The, the year is getting away fast, church. Our next in-person worship date will be on Sunday, July 30th. We'll be here uh, live in Sanctuary on July 30th at 1 p.m. We would look for. We would love to have you come here and be with us. Amen. Amen. I know there. Are, I know that there are July birthdays. Though those with July birthdays are not in the sanctuary today, but definitely want to uh, wish my my sister uh, a happy birthday. Her birthday is actually on July twenty second. Um, 
in memoriam, I want to wish my father a happy birthday. His birthday uh, is today. Uh, he would have been 97 today. And I want to wish my, my sons, my, my twin sons, uh, Michael and Joshua, happy birthday. They're 27 today. They were blessed to be born on my dad's birthday. Got a couple, got a couple of cousins whose birthdays are today as well. So July 16th is a busy day in, 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 in the Thomas orbit, and we thank and praise God for every birthday. And if your birthday is in July, the LWN family wants to wish you a happy and blessed birthday. Amen. Um, there will be additional announcements coming very, very soon. We definitely have some evangelistic things coming up in August. We'll be talking more about them as we draw a little bit closer to it. Uh, anything that I've forgotten? Any announcements I've forgotten? Anything? Anything? All hearts and minds good. Praise God. Well, if there's nothing else. Let's go ahead and pray and close out. For those that are watching via Facebook, we thank and praise God for you. Uh, we ask you to bow your heads and pray with us. We pray that you are blessed today by the word of our worship. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for this time that you've given us together. We thank you and praise you for the word that you've given us, Lord God, to, to meditate on and, and feast on over, over this past, over this upcoming week, oh God. Father God, we thank you for changing us from the inside out, and we thank you for helping us see that you called us to be sources of light, Lord God. Use us to bring clarity, Lord God, in this land of confusion, God, that the confusion would decrease as you increase, oh God. Make us doers of this word and not hearers only, Lord God. Use us for your glory. Glory, Father God, and bless us to be a blessing to others until we meet again in worship, Lord God. And as we meet again in worship, Lord God, at that appointed time, we'll have praise reports and testimonies of the great things that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless. Living Witness Ministries has been given a mandate to go into all the world and reach the same with the life-giving word. In this phase of our development, God is doing so through the ushering in of the Abandoned No More initiative. Through this campaign, God is using Living Witness Ministries to reach the whole man in major urban communities in order to help them realize and see that God has not forgotten them and neither has his church. Our first endeavor in this initiative is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin by obtaining a ministry campus in the Hampton Heights neighborhood. With this ministry campus, we're looking to establish holistic programs that impact every sector of the community, including the Living Witness Christian Academy, the AM Neighborhood Watch Program, the Feed My Sheep Community Food Pantry, the Provision Community Center and Beds Program, the AM Economic Empowerment and Wealth Center, the Kirkendall Community Health Center, the AM Community Beautification Campaign and the Lark and Lee Community Service Program. Won't you help us in our endeavor to practically reach this portion of the world with the life-giving word? Please sow into Living Witness Ministries Capital Building Fund. You can do so through our existing modes of giving, including Cash App at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020, Tithely or Givelify at Living Witness Ministries LaGrange, Illinois, or by mail at P.O. Box 250769, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53225. Please do your part as the Lord leads you to help us acquire this property so that we can be the blessing that God has called us to be in Milwaukee, but more importantly, so that we can fulfill our God-given mandate in this phase of ministry to possess the land in Milwaukee, one soul at a time, for God's glory. Thank you in advance for your support. And God bless.